Shalom Aleichem, and welcome back, everyone. As we are preparing for Shabbat Parashat Kitisa. And in this week's Parsha, we find a Pasuk where Moshe Rabbeinu tells HaKadosh Baruch Hu, after the Het Ego, the sin of the golden calf, Hashem, Moshe tells Hashem, Ve'ata. And now, Im hatatam, If you would forgive their sin, Ve'im ayin, and if not, Meheni na misifrecha, Asher katafta. Erase me now from the book that you have written. Rabotai Moshe Rabbeinu, Tells a Kadosh Baruch Hu, if you cannot forgive the Jews for the sin of the Egel Azov, then erase me from the Torah. This is a very important lesson because I will tell you, this is not just the Midah Moshe Rabbeinu, but Moshe Rabbeinu, the example of the great leader of Kal Yisrael, shows us that Moshe Rabbeinu, as all the great leaders in Kal Yisrael learn from, are ready to risk their lives. In order to save Kal Yisrael. That they understand that the people are the most important. And that they're there for Hashem's flock. And Hashem's people, the Am Yisrael, come before their own needs. Harav Yitzhak Hershkovitz, in his Sefer Nitzotzot, gives a mashal to explain He says there was a small village in Japan that was built atop a hill. And at the foot of the hill was a beach with a nice ocean. And the people that lived on this hill were simple, hard-working farmers. And unfortunately, for three years, they didn't have any rain. You can understand. They didn't have any rain. They didn't have any food. And then, after three years of such difficulty, such a drought... It started to rain. And the fields were irrigated. And the seeds began to grow. And it was a bumper crop like no other. The people were excited and decided to make a party. And obviously on the top of the hill there's not much room for a big party. So they went to the shore of the beach. And they made a party over there. Everybody came except... For the elderly sage, the mayor of the town, the person that everyone looked up to, he wasn't able to go down. As the leader of the community, this elderly sage sat at the top of the hill and was watching with great joy as the people were celebrating. Finally, they had food. Finally, they had a a, a great crop, a great season. And as, as they were there, he sees the sage sitting on the top. He sees that the beach, the ocean moves backward a few inches, then a few feet. And the ocean comes to rest 15 feet from its original bank. And when it's pulled back, it leaves an incredible treasures, fish, coins, gold, silver, Left over from sunken ships, the people were overwhelmed. They couldn't believe it. First they have such a great season. And now they're getting all these treasures. They start to dig it up. And the sage on the top, he's watching. He's so happy. But all of a sudden, his joy turns into horror. As he sees the ocean rising up and forming a giant tidal wave. At any moment, this water would come crashing down. Crushing all of the people. What should he do? He can scream, but they wouldn't hear him. He can't run. He's too old. He's unable to walk, let alone run. No one would hear his voice. But this old man couldn't give up. It was his people. He was their leader. He cared about the people. And so he did what he could. He took 
a match, poured some kerosene on his tent, and lit his house on fire. And the fire spread immediately with a few moments. Everyone at the foot of the hill looked up in disbelief and they saw the fumes of smoke rising up from the beloved leader's home. They dropped what they were doing to go save the leader. And as a result, when the tidal wave came crashing down, they were no longer there. The old man saved their lives by sacrificing all of his possessions. Awutai, the nimshal is obvious and the lesson is compelling. Achachamim, agedolim, they sit on top of the hill. They have an ability to see. Uh, they're able to see and their eyesight is not impaired. And they realize and they see what we're doing and they see what's happening to us. And so they cry out. And they, they, they cry out and they scream and they yell and they make fools of themselves. People look down at them because of the way they're acting, but they have so much pain to see what's happening to the people. But we don't hear them. We ignore them. We think they're being crazy. Ah, oh, another fanatic. But the fire in the hearts of these golim, is, of these gedolim, the fiery passion with which they cry out, even at the expense of their own health and welfare, they're trying to wake us up. The question is, will they be in time and will we be receptive to their cries? And so, I will tell you, it's so important when you see the rabbis talking out about Ahdut, rabbis talking about getting along, Noshon Hara, all these things, and people say, ah, oh, the fanatics, fanatics, they're just too much. They're always picking on something else. No, I will tell you, they're crying and screaming and yelling and telling us and speaking to us and reminding us to save us. And it's important for us to recognize that. <clears throat> Move on to another interesting idea that comes from this week's parasha. We have in the parasha, Kadosh Baruch Hu tells Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, Hashem says to us, He says, the people here, they 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 am kishe orif. They're stiff necked people. They make this sin. They don't listen. They're terrible. They're am kishe orif. Shem says, I'm not going to lead them. Hashem, I'm not going to. I refuse to personally accompany them to the promised land. I shall not ascend among you for your stiff necked people, lest I annihilate you on the way. And then. In the next Perek, in Perek Lamedal, Moshe Rabbeinu tells Hashem, Ve'yomer, Imna masati him be'enecha, Hashem, Yedachna Hashem b'kirbenu. If I found now favor in your eyes, my Lord, let my Lord go among us. Ki am kesher orif hu, because we are a stiff-necked people. Ve'salat labonenu hadatenu uchantanu. And you should forgive our iniquity and our error and make us your heritage. It's very, very complex here. Very, very un-understandable. Un, 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 un Hashem says, you guys are stiff-necked people. I want nothing to do with you. And Moshe Rabbeinu says, Hashem, please, find, we're finding favor in your eyes because we were stiff-necked people. So forgive us and be with us and help us. So how is that to be understood? What does this mean? And we'll tell you, let me ask you a question. We know we had the first of our Avinus, the first of our fathers, Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu is, has his son Yitzchak, and he wants to marry off Yitzchak. And so he tells his servant Eliezer to go to his birthplace, go back to ur Kazdim, and find a wife from there. In the Kuntras of Chachmei Lev, he says a Hidush from the Kotzker. The Kotzker ever said, Why did Abraham send back to Ur Kazdim? Abraham Avinu was now in Eretz Canaan. And in Eretz Canaan, it says that Abraham was able to convert the men, and Sarah was able to convert the women. In fact, when they were in Ur Kazdim, they threw Avraham Avinu into the fiery furnace. 
So why is Abraham Avinu sending Eliezer to go find a wife from there? So says the Kotzka, Abraham Avinu said, we're making Jews. We're creating a Jewish nation. You know what type of people we need to create a Jewish nation? We need a people faithful to its beliefs and faithful to its commitments. Not a people that bend in the wind. And Abraham Avinu was in Canaan. Who were the people here in Megaya? These people came by. Abraham Avinu gave them food. They said, thank you. He said, don't thank me. Thank God. And it's a free meal if you thank Hashem. Oh yeah, okay. I don't believe that was that anymore. And they got a free meal. It was not a deep commitment. And it did not last. Abraham Avinu passed away. All those people here in Megaya would disappear. Because it was, it was just, you know, uh, it wasn't a deep belief. But in Ur Kasdim, they believed in Avodah Zara. Abraham Avinu shows them million proofs, survives the fiery furnace. They still believe in Avodah Zara. Abraham Avinu says, these people, they really believe. They're very strong necked. They're very stiff necked. These are the people that stick to their guns. Now, Abraham Avinu said, obviously, we have to. Teach them to believe in Hashem. But once they do believe in Hashem, they're going to be an Am Kishe Oref. That's Kla Yisrael. Think about it, Rabotai. Think about it for one moment. How many pogroms, how many anti Semitic acts, crusades, inquisitions, massacres, pogroms, holocausts, October 7th, how all these attacks come to the Jews. And yet, the Jew still stands proud. The Jew still is here. Why? Because he's Am Keshe Oref. Moshe Rabbeinu tells Hashem, that's exactly why you should be with us. Because we're so stiff-necked, no matter what happens, we're going to be with you all the time. Being stiff-necked depends how you're using it. Avraham Avinu took Rifka who's stiff-necked for her, for her son, Yitzchak. She's stiff-necked, but she also knows to realize the truth. When there's Hashem, there's Hashem, and stick to that commitment. And no matter what comes our way, we always have a backbone to be strong-minded, <clears throat> to be stiff-necked, and to stand up against the world, and to be able to stay with that Kadosh Baruch Hu. In fact, they say that when the Kotzka Rebbe, when he was, uh, left his Rebbe in Tamoshov, and he went to search of a town where he could begin a Hasidut, he visited a number of, town, a number of towns. And many of the towns that he came, they welcomed him with open arms. And he said no. When he came to the city of Kotzk, the Jews of Kotzk were misnagdim. They were very against Hasidut. And they came out and they threw mud. They threw dirt. They threw stones on him. And he turns to his Gabba and he says, Oh, this is a city. This is where we're going to make Hasidut of Kotz. This place where they feel strong about their misorah. They feel strong about their beliefs, about their commitments. This is a Klai Yisrael. A Klai Yisrael believes strongly in its beliefs. Think about it, Abotai. It's this factor that made it possible for Klai Yisrael to rebuild after all the tragedies that have come our way, this is the trait, the trait of being a stiff-necked people that has sustained us through this long and bitter galut. I will take, I'll move on to our final offering for this week. We have, in this week's parasha, we have the Yudgimu Midot, the, the 13 attributes of mercy. And um, it says there in the middle, it's one of the attributes is Varav Hesed Ve'emet, abundant in kindness and truth. And then the next pasuk, Notzer Hesed Alafim, preserver of kindness for thousands of generations. So what's interesting to note that the word Emet is there, and that's one of the middle, one of the thirteen attributes of mercy is truth. 
So, Varav Hesed, abundance of kindness, I understand how it's an attribute of mercy. Notzer Hesed, which is the preserver of kindness, also I understand how it is a, a Mida uh, of Rahamim, uh, one of the 13 uh, um, attributes of mercy. But how is Emet, truth, an attribute of mercy? And so, I saw a story, a beautiful story, that... Uh, can give us a little bit of insight with the understanding. There was a young lady called Sarah. And Sarah wanted to um, get a job. It was an advertisement. And uh, she goes for the interview. It's a nice, good job. And she sees three other ladies there waiting. And the first lady goes in and she's talking to the second lady who's still there. She finds out this older lady that she had four younger children at home and her husband died and she's all alone and she's looking for a job to secure their future. They spoke for about 20 minutes and this older, el, older lady was called in and about 20 minutes later she came out and this young girl, Sarah, went inside. And as they were interviewing this young girl, Sarah, the middle of the interview said, we like you the most from everybody who came. We're willing to offer you the position right now. And in fact, we wanted to go with this salary, but we're going to give you a little more because we're very impressed with you. They gave her the number and they told her it's hers. And what happened next was unreal. Sarah said she was very happy and thanked them for their offer. But unfortunately, she had to decline the offer. The, 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 the people, the owners, the, the managers were, were, were uh, you know, in shock. The owner said, what do you mean you're going to decline the offer? We just gave you the offer, gave you a better offer than we thought we'd give you, and you're declining? She said, you know, I sat in the room right before with the previous lady who came in for the interview. And I know she's, she can do this job too. And she needs this job more than me. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to decline. And you're going to go with her because she's also very good. And she'll have a job. And with those words, she leaves. That night, the owner of the factory returned home. And he told his wife what a crazy day, crazy day he had. This girl came in for an interview. He gave her, gave her a better salary than he thought he would give. And she declined. That's just not normal. His wife looked on in amazement. And she said, do you have this girl's number? He says, I have it, but why do you need it? Well, she doesn't want the job. She said, don't worry, leave it to me. The next day, the owner of this factory, his wife, calls Sarah and she says to Sarah, I, said, I heard yesterday you declined the position. I'm not calling you to offer you another job. Rather, I wanted to know if you were dating some, someone or you were available to go out. Sarah was stunned. And she said, that the truth is she just started dating. She's not seeing one at the moment. And the owner's wife tells Sarah, you know, the truth is we have an only son. One son, that's it. He's very special. He's kind-hearted and unique. And when I heard of the greatness, the great kindness that you showed yesterday, I thought that perhaps you two would be ideal together. Sarah sat quietly on the phone and then agreed in principle to go out. They went out. And then they went out again and again. And a few months later, they were engaged and then eventually married. Sarah went to apply to be a worker. And at the end, ended up being one of the owners of this factory. And we'll tell you, we all know that the Yugimu Midot is not just something we say. It's something that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to emulate a Kadosh Baruch Hu. And part of emulating a Kadosh Baruch Hu is to be Rav Hesed, to be full of kindness. Because the truth is, these 13 attributes of mercy have to do with Teshuvah. And Teshuvah has to do with the person being true to themselves, coming back to their true self. And when a person comes back to their true self, and the person understands that everybody they do kindness for is really themselves. The kindness that they do is for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And when they do that, 
Then what happens? It's a preserver of kindness. HaKadosh Baruch Hu pays them back a million times over because they return to themselves. They realize who they are, that they can emulate HaKadosh Baruch Hu with both kindness and truth, understanding and being there for everyone. Just like a Kadosh Baruch Hu is. By acting in certain ways that manifest Hashem's attributes, we invoke these attributes and reconnect to Hashem. That's the Emet. Reconnecting to ourselves, reconnecting to a Kadosh Baruch Hu, coming back to that truth, that wholeness. And this, Ewotai, is a very important lesson. And so, to review, we had lesson number one. Lesson number one, that Achachamim are crying, they're speaking, they're telling us we have to wake up and listen. Lesson number two, that we have to be in Am Keshe'orif by staying Jewish. But we have to also be open to understanding what we need to do, what the Halakha wants from us, what the Torah wants from us, what Hashem wants from us. Achachim say how to follow. And at the same time, no matter what comes our way, we believe fully in the Kadosh Baruch Hu, as a Jew never breaks and always stays close to Hashem. And our third and final lesson, to have Hesed, Emet, the Hesed, and a Kadosh Baruch Hu should give us all, Yushuot, Nehamot, everything that we need should be answered. And we should be, Be'ezat Hashem, see the Mashiach Tzikainu, be able to greet Mashiach, Bekarov, Shabbat Shalom, like